What's up everybody? Speed Eminent 706 here, and it's been a while since I've come out with a video, but nonetheless, I have a video. And first and foremost, I want to apologize if the camera quality is not the best or the angles aren't the best. Um, my original camera battery is dead dead, and I don't have the time to recharge and do a video and do everything else in between. So we're going to have to go with my phone video or my phone camera. So hopefully it works. If not, I apologize. Well, today we're going to go over the Nintendo Switch. And what specifically? The Joy-Con shells. And I have a package. So without further ado, let's see what's inside. Nice. For the Switch Joy-Con, please scan the QR code to watch the installation video before you open your package. So, here's the little instructions on the back, and it comes in a nice little plastic case. I ordered this from a company called Bass Top, Bass Top, Bass Top, um, and it was ordered from eBay. And something I want to say about the seller is the seller was amazing, real quick to respond, real quick to process my order and shipping and everything. Kept me updated, so um, I'll put a link to this in the description as well as the seller's information if you choose to go that route. So, let's see what's inside. Well, you can already see what's inside, but let's take it out. Alright, so we have this. Slides out. We have our shells. And we have our little buttons. Don't know if you can really see that but it's got the ABXY buttons and then you have the little arrow buttons so that's pretty cool alright now with these shells there's different pieces you have the back piece you have a center piece Oops. center piece if I don't drop it and then you have the front piece. Now, same thing for the other Joy-Con shell, and it's pretty good. It has it has kind of a matte finish. I don't know if you can really see that, but it's got a matte finish, and it feels pretty good. I like it. I decided to go with white because the black and white scheme kind of sets off the switch really well, in my opinion. Um, bass top, base top, whatever they're called, they have different color shells. They have atomic purple, green, orange, uh, clear. They have solid color shells like white, black, orange. The imagination is the limit, so um, I'd say really check them out. Once again, I'll put that stuff in the description, but let's go ahead and get the stuff assembled. Alright, let's go ahead and get started with our tools. First, you're going to need a set of tweezers, a tool kit, and make sure your tool kit has a tri-head screwdriver. You're going to need that. A tray or something to hold in your screws to keep them separate and from losing them, and also your Joy-Cons. Now here I decided to just go with a generic black set of Joy-Cons because why get something special? Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start with our left Joy-Con first, and your tri-head should look something like this. So go ahead and take that Joy-Con and flip it over. Now as you can see there are four spots for the four screws in there. So go ahead and take them out one by one and just be careful. Apply a good amount of pressure so you don't strip them because once again these screws are very brittle and they're hard to replace. Once that's done go ahead and pry open the Joy-Con. It takes a little bit of force but it's not hard just make sure you're careful. I like to use a spudger and it's going to take a little bit of force but once you get that done you should open it like a book from the outside edges due to the ribbon cables on the inside and it should look just like this alright next we're going to remove the battery so go ahead and grab your spudger and pry it out or something equivalent you can use your tweezers or you can use your fingers and just simply lift it out of there now on the end of this battery there is a little connector piece and all it is is just a, a push plug so you can either use your tweezers or your fingers to pull it out I use my fingers because once again that worked for me and you just simply snap it out just like that set it off to the side now now go ahead and take a Phillips attachment and start taking out the screws on the inside and make sure you put them in your tray so you don't lose them 
Now you're going to look for this little bottom screw and take that out as well because the center tray comes out in one piece. Now be careful when manipulating this because as you can see here there's a ribbon cable that goes under that tray. So what you want to do is you want to pull it away from the inside and lay it over just like this. Because that ribbon cable is thin and the last thing you want to do is tear it. So now what we're going to do, we're going to talk about removing these ribbon cables. And as you can see here there's a little black tab. So take your tweezers and pop that tab up, secure the ribbon cable and gently slide it out of place just like that and do the same thing with this cable right here. This one is connected to the thumbstick. And just repeat the process for the rest of the ribbon cables on this Joy-Con. And now what you want to do is go ahead and take that R button out and make sure you don't lose a spring right here that's very crucial. Set that off to the side and again take your Phillips attachment and start attaching the thumbstick. It may seem a little rough to be able to pull that thumbstick out but it's being held in there by a plastic gasket so it's fine. Don't worry about it. Alright now go ahead and take off the Phillips head screw to the motherboard and now it's able to be put with the rest of the screws. Right here is the rumble pack and trapped in foam so you don't have to worry about doing any damage to it. It's held in there by some adhesive so just go ahead and pull it out. You can use some force because it's fine, you're not going to damage it. And then once that's done, you can simply pull out the rumble pack and the motherboard and set those off to the side. Alright, right up here there's three little screws and that's for your plus button and some other functions of the Joy-Con. So go ahead and do the same thing. Just remove those screws, but make sure you pay attention to what screws these are because some Phillips screws are longer than shorter than others. So go ahead and set those off to the side and take out this portion. Now we're ready to transfer pieces over to our new Joy-Con shell. So take a good look at everything and make sure you put everything in there the exact way you found it. So we're going to start with taking our rubber grommet off and we're going to transfer one button at a time. Now this right here, this is that plastic gasket I was talking about earlier. It's held on by some adhesive and it's a little finicky because the last thing you want to do is damage it. But just pull it out and simply just lay it on the inside of the new shell. And there's going to be two little tabs that stick up that help align it. So the best thing to do is just simply lay it on there and align it and it'll sit down just fine. Once that's done, just continue the process of transferring your buttons the same way that you found them. And now it's time for our new buttons. So go ahead and take those new buttons out of the bag and you can align them any way you want, but just keep in mind that they might be labeled differently. So for example, you might not want to have your A button labeled as the X button or your B button labeled as something else. But again, the option's up to you, but just remember to put them however they go. Now let's go ahead and put this upper portion of the ribbon cable back on on top of our button and screw them back down with those same screws and they should fit snugly and securely. You shouldn't have to force anything. Check for functionality by giving it a few pushes and it's good to go. Go ahead and replace the R button and make sure the spring sits in just fine. Once again test it for functionality and it looks good. Now you want to go ahead and take your motherboard and place it back on but before that look in those rubber grommets and make sure they're properly aligned with your buttons. Because last thing you want to do is put it all back together just to take it apart. Set in your rumble pack, your motherboard, and insert your thumbstick. Now once that's done, go ahead and take those screws and start screwing the thumbstick back onto the Joy-Con shell on the motherboard itself. Now getting that thumbstick in can be kind of finicky, but you won't damage anything. Just make sure you're careful. Go ahead and secure a set of tweezers and grab that ribbon cable at the base. Slide it back inside where it's snug and just push that little tab back down to secure it in place. Do the same thing for the other ribbon cables. And that's what it should look like right here. Now something you can do right here is go ahead and screw in the top left and the bottom right screws onto that motherboard. Alright, now let's go ahead and switch over the bar from the black shell onto the new shell. 
So as you can see here, there's a Phillips screw. Just go ahead and unscrew it and simply lift it up and out of the shell, just like that. Go ahead and transfer the release button from the black shell to the new white shell. And simply lay your locking bar back onto the new shell and screw it back into place. Make sure it aligns up with the tabs that you can see here, the little raised portion on the black locking bar. Go ahead and secure that down and you are good to go. Add a little bit of pressure on it, push some of the buttons, test for functionality and make sure it's snug. Alright, now what we want to do is probably one of the harder things on this project and that's changing out the ZL button. So with the way it's set in there, you're going to have to use a lot of force and you're going to have to grab from the top and pull away. And it's, it's hard to get into because the center piece is so thin and it's just awkward. But with a little bit of pressure and pulling, you can get it. Now this comes with two springs and make sure you do not lose those two springs. Unscrew the Phillips head screw inside, set it off to the side, and simply just remove the little motherboard chip that's in there and set it off to the side. Put it inside your new shell and re-screw it back down with that one single Phillips head screw. And notice these two little nubs that are sticking out, those are the mounts for your springs on this ZL button. So make sure you align those springs and then set your ZL button on top and it simply just snaps into place. And just take your time, align it, and push from the bottom first. And once it snaps, make sure you test for functionality and has good resiliency. Alright, now we're ready to reconnect the other side of the Joy-Con back to one side. So take those two ribbon cables, grab it at the base, and just slide it back into its original slot, and slide down the tab to where it clicks into place. Repeat the process for the other side. Now you want to take that middle piece, and this little ribbon cable is a little finicky. So I recommend laying it open the same way that you took it out. Slide it back in, lock it into place, and then when you replace that center piece back into the Joy-Con, simply just roll it over back on itself just like this, and return the bottom left, top right, and the far bottom left screws. Now it's time to return the battery into its original compartment. Place it back down inside to where it snaps into place. Now all that's left to do is simply to close it up. Now it's going to be a snug fit, and you have to make sure everything's put in there just right or else it will not close and you could potentially damage the internals. And that's the last thing you want to do. But as you can see here, everything looks good. The seams close just fine. Test the buttons before sealing it up. Everything has a nice good push and feel to it. So then go ahead and return the screws back inside of the holes. And now we have our finished product. And man, does it look good. Really nice crisp feel, looks good, and all seams are closed. So now, that is our left Joy-Con. That's what it looks like compared to the right. So we're going to do the same thing with the right. We're going to go ahead and remove the screws in the same manner. Open it up. And just be careful with it so you don't tear up the ribbon cables just like before. Remove the battery just like before. And the only thing that's different is this sensor right here. So just like the battery, it simply lifts up and it just pops out like the battery. So you just pop it out and set it off to the side. Alright, so go ahead and either with your fingers or your tweezers, go ahead and disconnect that battery just like that and set it off to the side. Now the layout of this centerpiece is different. Notice the location of these Phillips head screws. Go ahead and unscrew all of those. Now, there's a ribbon cable right under that ZR button, and it's really tough to get to, but just be careful with it, take your time, and raise up the tab from the inside, and simply slide it out. Notice how short it is. Alright, do the same thing with the other ribbon cables just like before, disconnect them from the tabs, and then pull the ribbon cable out from the base of the connector itself. Same thing with the thumbstick. Once that's done, then go ahead and use your Phillips attachment to take out the Phillips head screws, just like that. Remove the other button, the R button, and then take out the screws for the thumbstick. You can go ahead and take it out just like before and set it off to the side. Now as you can see here, go ahead and remove this ribbon cable and that ribbon cable. These are to the IR sensors 
for the Joy-Con. That's another difference between the left Joy-Con and the right Joy-Con. So once everything's removed, the layout's still pretty much the same. You just want to make sure that you get this little bar out. This is also part of the sensor as well. It's also held on by adhesive, but just simply pry it out and set it off to the side. And go ahead and lift out the IR sensor itself, and then begin transferring your buttons from one Joy-Con to the other. And now once again, we're going to go ahead and grab our new buttons and start laying them in one at a time. Once that's done, take your rubber grommet and place it inside and make sure those two little rectangles fit in snugly where they should go. And then continue moving buttons over in the same manner. And once again, be mindful of this plastic gasket and don't damage it. Now it's time to return the IR sensor back into its original spot, push it down and secure it, take the bar and place it back down inside as well. Make sure it's nice secure and the adhesive should help it stick back in itself. Go ahead and replace the thumbstick back inside, secure it down with the screws, replace the rumble pack, and replace the motherboard. And then go ahead and start replacing the ribbon cables back in by placing them in and snapping the tab back down. Now some of these can be a little finicky, but just take your time and you can get it done. Alright, go ahead and re replace the screws back onto the motherboard just like this. And when it's all said and done, it should be a finished product that looks somewhat like this. Now some of this I had to do off camera because it was just hard to get the angles and do it the right way. Alright, now it's time to go ahead and transfer the ZR button to the new metal portion of the shell. So go ahead and pry it from the top, don't lose the springs, and set those off to the side. Go ahead and take that Phillips screw out and make sure you remove that chip and transfer it to the new middle section of the new Joy-Con. Replace the Phillips head screw just like before, align the springs, and then place the ZR button back on top in the same way as before. Make sure those nubs are on top of those springs. Once again, test for functionality. It looks good, feels good, so it is good. Now go ahead and grab that back piece. Remove that same Phillips head as previously described. Take out the locking bar. And we're going to transfer the button as well. Grab your new back shell. Place the new button in there. And go ahead and grab your locking bar. Align it with the tabs. And screw back in that same Phillips head screw as previously before. Go ahead and return the R button back in there as well. In the Joy-Con, make sure it tests well for functionality. And this middle section is going to be a pain in the butt. But as the same way as you removed it, go ahead and attach it the same way. Now you're going to take that back piece and you're going to rejoin it back onto the Joy-Con itself. So go ahead and grab them at the base, slide them inside the connectors, and snap the tab back on. Same thing with the other one. Now as you can see here, I went ahead and reconnected that other sensor um, off camera, but all you do is just simply pop it down on back to the connection and it's secure. Alright, so go ahead and take that middle piece and roll it back over to where it belongs and you want to replace the screws back where they belong to make sure it doesn't move so we can return the other components back there safely. Alright, now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and grab our battery, set it back in there and we're going to reconnect it the same way it was disconnected. Alright, once that's done, go ahead and take that sensor and slide it back into the slot that's made for it just below the battery. And go ahead and take some tweezers or something small and fish that cord back inside that slot so it doesn't stick up and impede the closing of the Joy-Con or even damage anything. Once that's done, go ahead and close it back up like the previous Joy-Con. Make sure it all fits nice and snug. There's no pinching or binding or anything like that. Push all the buttons and make sure they test well for functionality and they all have good resiliency, good pushback. And then once that's done, return each screw back to its respective positions. And once that's done, give it one final look over, push the buttons, and make sure everything tests well and pushes well, and has an all-around good feel to it. Alright, so we're satisfied with our work, and now here's our finished product, the left and the right Joy-Cons. Now we're going to go ahead and connect to the Switch. Go to the test screen and go ahead and test every button to make sure they work. And as you can see here, I'm pushing every button that I can think of, and I want to make sure this thing works perfectly. And so far, so good.
every button seems to work just fine. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and test this on some Street Fighter. Because I love Street Fighter. And so far, it feels great. It feels like the Black Joy-Cons has good response, good, good clicky feel, nice and fresh. But the plus about it, it looks great. Well, that about wraps it up, and I hope this helped you make the decision to either swap out your shell case or stay away from it. Honestly, in my opinion, it's not hard. It isn't hard, it's just time consuming. You don't have to have, I don't know, the, the hands of a brain surgeon. You don't have to have the coordination of a figure skater. You can have the coordination of a blind rhino and the grace of a baby earthworm just all over the place. But as long as you take your time and organize your screws, then you should be able to do it. And like I said before, I'm going to put the name of the person that I bought this from from eBay down in the description below. And the company that I got this from was, once again, Bass Tops or Base Tops, whatever, whatever they're called. But that will also be in the description below. I'm Speed Demon 8706 Have a great day.